Welcome to Cross Craig Church's carol service for 2020. This service will proceed with very little announcement. And as we prepare to hear the story of God's salvation come in Jesus and foretold by the prophets through the ages, let's take a moment in the stillness to recognise God's presence with us in our homes as we enjoy this celebration of Christmas. Brothers and sisters, in the name of Christ, I welcome you to Cross Craig Church. In this unusual year of 2020, we've come together as Christmas draws near to prepare for the celebration of the birth of God's beloved Son. Through the days of Advent, we followed the light of Christ, and now we travel in spirit with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to acclaim with the multitude of the heavenly host the coming of the Prince of Peace. Through scripture and silence, prayer and song, let us hear again the wonderful story of our redemption. And hearing, let us rejoice and respond with lively faith, remembering the light of Christ given to us and present with us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our second carol is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. taken from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Sing. 
reading is taken from Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. Second lesson. The prophet gives words of hope to the people. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Thanks be to God. praise from Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Thanks be to God. From Luke chapter 1 verse 1 and verses 3 to 7. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Thanks be to God.
shepherds and the angels. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. Wise men are led by a star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star as it rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. 
And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overcome with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid their homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Thanks be to God. I thought since everyone else is watching from home that I would film my talk from home. This has been a properly challenging and strange year. The word unprecedented has been used an unprecedented number of times throughout the entire year. And our politicians and chief scientists seem to be using a lot of metaphors at the moment. We've had penalty shootouts and speed limits in poor driving conditions, and that's just in the past few days. But the most common metaphor seems to be that of a tunnel. The vaccine is providing the light at the end of that tunnel. And I can totally understand that. 2020 has felt a bit like being in a tunnel, eagerly awaiting a glimpse of a promised light at the end of it. Arguably, the most famous Christmas Bible passage is the reading from John 1, which we will hear in a few moments. It describes Jesus' birth as light 
coming into the darkness. That's different to our tunnel image. It's different because Jesus the light comes into the darkness. The light comes to us. It does not rely on us going to the light. At Christmas, God came to us in Jesus. So what difference does that coming make? Surely if we remain in the dark with the light, little has changed. Or has it? Darkness can be quite disorientating. We can feel alone, uncertain, insecure. And a light, even what appears to be a small light, can make a huge difference. A light brings a sense of orientation, security, peace, warmth. At Jesus' birth, the light of God, the very word of God, came into being in flesh and blood and lived amongst us. He came to be with us in Jesus, to show us what God is really like, to live and die for us and to be raised again. The darkness could not overcome the light. The light of Jesus Christ came and remains and nothing can change that. God is with us. Wherever we are watching this now, God is with us. No matter how dark life may feel, God is with us, bringing his presence and light and security and peace for us to know in our homes, in our lives and in our hearts. And there is more. John says that the light brought life, eternal, inextinguishable life. He goes on to say that those who accept the light, those who receive it and believe in Jesus, are given the power to become children of God, which is extraordinary when you think about it. Children of God know the Creator God as Father, as parent in the here and now, and children of God receive the promise to spend eternity with God, their Father, forever. The remarkable truth about Christmas is that God comes to be with us in our lives, a light with us at all times, and God comes to us to offer the gift of becoming a child of God through belief in Jesus, belief in who he was, what he said, what he did. All we need to do is receive that gift to become a child of God. Receiving the light doesn't mean that the challenges of life go away. We may still experience the darkness, but it does mean that we have life, an eternal future where there will be no darkness and a light in the darkness that cannot be overcome. So this Christmas, I encourage you in the words of John to receive the light of life for yourself, in your heart and receive the power to become a child of God. Let's pray. And please do pray with me if you want to receive that light for the first time or renew the power of the light once more in your life. Lord Jesus Christ, praise and thank you that you came into the world. I turn from the darkness in my life and open myself to receive your light and your life. Come and bring your light into the darkness. Fill me with hope and help me to believe and follow you into 2021. Amen. As we hear these words of John now read to us by Alan, let's hear them for ourselves. Jesus longs to come to us today right now. Let's hear it. The beginning of the Gospel according to St John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him 
not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. All praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray to Jesus, our Saviour. We pray for all those who do not have comfortable homes this Christmas, those who live on our streets, those 
who are living in difficult circumstances. Christ, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, our Saviour, hear our prayer. This year we pray especially for those suffering in any way from coronavirus, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have loved ones ill in hospital, giving thanks for the medical services from nurses to doctors to hospital porters to GPs and giving thanks for those who have developed the vaccine and praying for a successful vaccination programme. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. We pray for those across our world who are suffering from war, terrorism and violence. For those who suffer from domestic violence. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. As we continue to wrestle with the Brexit question, we pray for politicians here and within Europe that a resolution may be found. We pray for all leaders of nations wherever they neg negotiate for peace and a better life. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, Give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory be to you forever. Amen. We commend all whom we love, or who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father, as we say together as Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the humility of the shepherds, the faith of the wise men, the joy of the angels and the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to us and to all this Christmas and always. Amen. A closing blessing. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Our closing carol is Joy to the World.
And so some closing notices. Thank you to all of those who've taken part in this service, including those who've decorated this building and prepared it, those who've filmed and edited and the whole team. Thank you. We look forward to sharing the crib service online on Christmas Eve and the midnight communion and Christmas morning service also online. And both of those last two, the midnight and the Christmas morning are also in building. If you're planning on coming to either of those two in building services, please do let Marlene or me know about that so that we can plan seating properly. Hope you've enjoyed the carols today and look forward to continuing to celebrate Christmas with you through this week. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.